Hi guys. So today I would like to continue our discussion on Brownian motion. So, so far we basically have been developing theory to actually help us construct a Brownian motion. So if you remember, um, in the last few lectures we've been talking about scale symmetric random walk. And scale symmetric random walk is given by Wn of t. And this is nothing but 1 by square root of n, m of nt, right? Where m of nt was summation of i equals 1 to nt of x of i's. And x of i's were basically a series of random variables that only took two values, a plus one or a minus one, depending on if the ith coin toss was a head or a tail. Okay, so we had defined this to be our scale symmetric random walk. Now, as n goes to infinity, scale symmetric rock, uh, uh, scale symmetric uh, random walk basically gives us a Brownian motion. Okay. So as n goes to infinity, so you could think that we basically now are tossing coins infinitely very fast, okay? So as n goes to infinity, we basically are tossing coins faster and faster and faster. So now the formal definition of Brownian motion, so let's basically consider um, a probability space given by a sample space, a sigma algebra, and a probability measure. Let's consider a continuous function given by Wt, which depends on omega okay so you can think of it as like we basically toss a series of coins and depending on the output of those coin tosses we get some sample path given by wt if we again toss another series of coin tosses we'll get a different path okay so this wt basically is the continuous function which depends on the outcome outcome of a random experiment and omega basically this outcome basically belongs to our sample space okay also this process basically start at time zero basically is equal to zero for all t's greater than or equal to zero this process is defined for t greater than or equal to zero okay now if we take uh, time increments given by zero less than or equal to t1 less than or equal to t2 less than or equal to t3 all the way to less than or equal to tm and if we take um, non-overlapping increments of this which is given by w of t1 minus w of t0 w of t2 minus w of t1 all the way to w of tm minus w of tm minus 1 now here the times are basically non-overlapping right so this basically term is between this time then this is t2 minus t1 so these times are not overlapping if these random variables are independent and if they're normally distributed with expected value of zero so expected value of t of a generic term if this is equal to zero and variance is is given by t i minus t i minus one and they're normally distributed then this process w t is called brownian motion okay so for this to be a brownian motion we basically want this w t to be dependent on outcome of our random experiment we want these independent non-overlapping increments to be independent of one another and normally distributed with mean of zero and variance of the length of the time step. If these conditions are true, then WT is basically called a Brownian motion. Okay? So as I said, Brownian motion, these increments are basically um, normally distributed with mean zero, variance one. So for example, now if you wanted to calculate what are the probability that a Brownian motion at time t so t let's assume to be 0 0.5 so if you want to figure out what are the probability that the brownian motion at t equals 0 0.5 is between 0 and so let's say 0 0.7 okay if you wanted to calculate this we could use the density function to do that and density function we can do this integrate from 0 to 0 0.7 of f of x here basically w of 0 0.5 mean is 0 variance would be 0 0.5 this can be written as 1 by square root of 2 pi 
sigma square would be 0 0.5 exponent of minus half x minus mu x is basically x mu is 0 so this becomes x square by sigma square is again 0 0.5 d of x okay so this basically using the density function we can calculate what are the probability that a brown motion at time say 0 0.5 is between some two values and we can use the density function to calculate that okay so this basically was the you know in brief introduction of brownian motion with the definition now let's actually move on to uh, talking about distribution of a brownian motion